My name's Alex and I work for East Riding Libraries and today we're going to do a reminiscence session for you. Because we can't come into the homes to see you, we've decided that we will come to you via the medium of film. So we've already, in our previous films, we've talked about rooms of the house and we talked last time about things that happened on your street and what your street was like and the neighbours and that sort of thing. So today, this is our clue. So some bunting. So can you guess what we're talking about today? Yeah, I'm sure you've got it. We're going to talk about celebrations and more particularly community celebrations. So um, things like um, national events, so like royal weddings and maybe royal births, um, commemorations for the war um, or celebrations as well at the end of the war that sort of thing so that's what we're going to talk about today so we'd like you to have a think about how you celebrated those sort of events in your area if you lived in a town you might have had a street party in the past it was a bit easier because there wasn't as much traffic so it was quite easy to just shut off your street um, or Maybe you lived in a village, somewhere a bit more rural, and maybe you uh, all got together in the village hall or on the village green to have a celebration. Or if you lived in a town and your street was too busy, um, maybe you met together in a social club or a community centre and had your celebrations there. So we'd also like you to think about what sort of things you remember celebrating. Do you remember celebrating maybe the Queen's coronation or um, any of the jubilees or royal weddings or possibly um, some things for the war? So VE Day or VJ Day, you may remember those from when you were very young. So what we'll do now is we'll have a little bit of a pause and you can have a chat amongst yourselves about how you used to celebrate these sort of events and what events you remember celebrating. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. Welcome back. Um, so you've hopefully all just had a chat about how you celebrated various national events. So we're going to now talk about... Um, things like street parties or as I say things that happened in your village hall we will we'll call it street parties but you know we're talking about all those sort of celebrations so obviously if you're having your party you'll need your flags if it's a royal event so we pinned ours up on the wall and as we saw before you'll need your bunting now did you string it across the street from house to house and where did you get your bunting from did somebody make it was there somebody on the street who was a whiz with the sewing machine and they were frantically sewing up sewing away uh were there other things that you put out um i don't know there may be there may have been something on your street that got wheeled out every time there was a a celebration so we've just got some pictures here of things that you might have celebrated. So this one, Queen's Coronation. There we go. Now, some of you may have watched that on the telly. That may have been some, the first thing that you remember watching on the television. Um, and then here we've got, this is a, a coronation party. Now, these children are all from Beeston and they're all gathered together and they had a street party and then they were all getting on a bus and going on a day trip to Redka. That was their, that was their treat for the, um, the coronation. Now, coming a bit more up to date, there's obviously royal weddings. So, Charles and Di, I remember Charles and Di's wedding. I, I do remember that. And I believe I got a celebration mug. It wasn't like this, 
but um, we all got them. I think we had a party at the church, and I think that's where I got mine from. But yeah, this is one. This is um, to celebrate the royal marriage. So do you remember getting any souvenir items? It might have been a coin, or as I say, a mug, or I don't know what else you might have got. Um, a medal, I don't know. But have a think about the things that you might have got, the souvenir items that you got given, or was there something that um, that was bought and that took pride of place in your house? Um, biscuit tins and things like that around that time, they all had whatever the event was. Okay, so we've also got some actual pictures of street parties. Now this one, this one's a VJ Day celebration. We know that because Sophie, who appeared in one of our other films, her father-in-law's on this picture, but he was only very young at the time. So we know that that was a celebration that they had, street party they had for VJ Day. And we've got another one here. <clears throat> with all the children sat down the street. We're not quite sure what this one's for. But this is looks like your, your sort of traditional street party there. So thinking about things like that, if you ever went to something like this, can you remember the sort of things that you ate? Was it cake and sandwiches and um, some sort of squash to drink? And how was that catered? Did everybody's mum make something and bring it all out into the street? Or was there um, just an army of ladies that you all pulled the ingredients and they just made a whole shipping order of sandwiches and things? Was Did the whole street or the whole area smell of baking in those days before that celebration as everybody was whipping up all these fairy cakes and buns and things for these celebrations? Um, I'm assuming it probably was a whole community effort, the whole community coming together. And what about music? Did somebody come along and play or did somebody maybe get an old piano out or something like that? Now we were having to think about this and the music or more likely the songs that you might have sung at celebrations like this. And there's a couple that we thought you might know that we're going to have a go at singing. Uh, it might not be very good, but I'm sure you can join in. Okay, so we're going to start off with It's a Long Way to Tipperary and then carry on with Pack Up Your Troubles. Okay, so we'll try that. So we'll count in one, two, three. It's a long way to Tipperary, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, to the sweetest girl I know. Goodbye Piccadilly, farewell Leicester Square, it's a long, long way to Tipperary, but my heart's right there. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you've a Lucifer to light your fag, smile boys, that's the style. What's the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So, pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. Well done, I hope you were all singing along there. So we're just going to have a little bit of a break there so that you can have a chat about the street parties and the community parties that you remember attending and what you had to eat and what the entertainment was and how you would decorate, how the street or the community hall was decorated. So we'll just have a little pause. Right, well, we've talked about um, how we celebrated national events within our community, but obviously there's those family events as well um, that 
probably everyone on your street did celebrate with you because they were all friends and neighbours. Now the first one we're going to start with, we're going to give you a little clue. So if you want to have a listen, I'm sure from this you'll be able to guess what we're going to start with. Yeah, I'm sure you've all got it. I'm sure you've all got it. Yeah. Well, first of all, we're going to talk about weddings and how they were celebrated within your community. OK, now, um, <clears throat> my mum and dad, uh, they've just had their 50th wedding anniversary and they got married in the, the village chapel where my mum lived, which was actually in Sobe. So they got married at Sobe Methodist Church and then they had their... Um, <clears throat> Re reception in the orangery at Sobey Hall and we've got photos of them on the steps outside Sobey Hall and things like that. Now all the all the community would have been invited to the service so all the friends and neighbours would have all been invited to the service. So can you remember um, weddings from when you were a child or your wedding um, how that was celebrated. Um, did everyone on the street come out to watch you leave? Uh, I know that happens quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> did you have a church wedding? Did you have bells and things like that? So we've got a couple of pictures here. Now this one, um, people coming out of church and lots of people stood outside. Now, Sophie, as we've talked about, Sophie grew up in a village and she remembers when people got married in the village, all the children went and waited outside the church um, because when the adults were throwing confetti, the bride and groom would throw out coins and all the children would scramble around to pick up the coins. Um, it's not something I'd ever heard of. So is that something that you ever remember, remember doing as a child? Um, Somebody else who quite often um, traditionally came to weddings. The chimney sweep, look. <clears throat> Do you remember chimney sweep ever coming to any weddings that you went to or your wedding? It was said to be good luck to have um, a chimney sweep at your wedding. Um, and the tradition was that he shook the hand of the groom and kisses the bride's cheek and wished the guests luck. He also, you might not be able to see it, but on his shoulder here, you might be able to see the two little eyes, he has a black cat. And they were often brought, um, sometimes as a wedding gift, but they were brought to the wedding for good luck by the chimney sweep. Okay. Must have taken quite a lot of training, these cats, because they travelled sitting on the sweep's shoulder. Okay. And there's another one. That one might be a little bit clearer. You might be able to see the cat there. He's against the skyline there, so you may be able to see that a bit better. Okay. Um, the other things that might have been celebrated, um, christenings things like that, the birth of a baby, um, things, <clears throat> when a child was born, um, did that, did things happen within the community when people had a baby, were things handed down, um, prams and cots and things like that, were they sort of passed around depending who needed them at the time? Um, <clears throat> the other thing, sadly, that would have also happened within the community would be funerals. Um, I know it was a big, a big thing that people had um, a, a good funeral, that they were given a good send off. So how did things like funerals happen in your community? Um, did everybody help with like the, the tea afterwards, the funeral tea or the wake afterwards? Um, how did, how did that, things like that work? And can you think of anything else that was celebrated within your community that happened within the family? I know birthdays weren't particularly um, celebrated with parties and stuff. That's more of a recent thing. But was there anything else? Was 18th and 21st birthdays? Did, 
did they have parties um, in your community? So if you'd like to just, we'll have a little chat about that. We're going to pause the filming. So if you want to talk about your family celebrations and what you remember about those. <clears throat> Okay, I hope you've had a good chat about those family celebrations um, that you had when you were younger or that you remember having maybe when you were a bit older and when your children were younger. We're now going to talk about things, um, yearly events that happened within your community. So um, if you lived in a slightly rural community, a big event that would happen every year would be the country fair. Okay, so all the agricultural fair. So we've got some photos here. We've got some lovely heavy horses there. And prize bull. So obviously those farmers have brought them in um, to be judged. To see whether they've got the best within the area. And obviously, on the side of that, quite often there was other sorts of competitions. So here we've got um, creations made out of fruit and vegetables. So there we've got a lion. We've got um, a lady and gentleman at the back. An owl made from a pineapple. And then at the bottom, I don't know, ladies, if you were ever a member of the WI um, and you lived in a rural area, you would be entering your cakes and things in the, in the agricultural shows, cake baking competition, the best Victoria sponge or the best scone. Okay, they quite often had craft, craft tents as well, where people would enter their knitting or their sewing or things like that. So do you remember ever going to anything like that? If you live more in a town, uh, you might remember summer fates um, or school fates that happened every year. Um, <clears throat> there's also um, parades and carnivals. We've got one here. A lot of children walking down the street. Look, some in fancy dress. Um, We've got trikes and scooters and things. They're all, all parading through the streets there. Something that happened in May. The maypole dancing. That was not something I ever did. And I don't think I've ever actually seen it being done. But um, did you have a maypole in your community? And did you do maypole dancing? Were you all taught at school? In April, how to dance around the maypole. So you get this lovely, lovely twist on the on the ribbons at the top, and not just a big knotted mess. Okay. <clears throat> There's also that your summer fair, your summer fair. You may have had some games. So the tug of war. You may have had that. Or sack races there. And we've got some running races there. Something else that might have come to your um, summer fate, or it may have come on its own, but um, rides and things like that. You may have had a travelling fair that came. Um, I know we have one in Bridlington that normally comes in October. And the rides come, the, the candy floss and toffee apples and things. We've got some music that might bring back some memories about that travelling, about those travelling fairground rides. You remember hearing that music and going round and round on the steam horses up and down on the carousel i hope that brings back some memories for you the other thing which may have come into 
your area might have been a circus probably in those days it would probably have had animals so do you remember um the circus coming to town and possibly the elephants parading through the streets or any other animals that you'd never maybe seen before so camels or things like that that might have come with the circus and do you remember going to visit a circus okay so we'll oh the other thing that may have come is a steam organ so we've got some music from that as well so do you remember ever having a steam organ at any of your fairs So we've covered quite a lot of things there, but the, the yearly events that may have happened within the, your community to celebrate bank holidays or things like that, or like things that came into your community on a yearly basis, like fairs and circuses and things like that. So we'll have a pause now and you can have a little bit of a think about um, the things we've just talk, talked about and those events that happened within your community. Okay, welcome back. Something that I forgot to mention when we were talking earlier, carnivals. I have to show you this photo. Some of you have met Sophie on another one of our films. Well, she's brought in these photographs. And I don't know whether you can see at the bottom, this pantomime horse, possibly a cow, not quite sure. But one of these under here is Sophie. I'm not quite sure whether she qualified for the front end or the back end. But um, her mum spent ages making that fancy dress costume. So is there any particular fancy dress costumes that you remember wearing? We think that float at the top is the woman who lived in a shoe and had so many children she didn't know what to do. Okay, so that's a good one to think about. Fancy dress costumes. Okay, something else that's maybe more recent, but you might remember them from times gone by. Scarecrow festivals okay making scarecrows was quite a, a rural thing to very practical use to start with to scare the birds away but um then they be, became a bit more widely used to try and usually as fundraisers um and everybody made we've got um yellow brick wizard of oz down here okay with the tin man and the lion the scarecrow okay so anything like that <clears throat> got some things that may have happened in school or if you went to a local church that harvest festival okay usually happens sort of september time okay where you all take your produce and it was distributed back out usually to people in your community so maybe the older people in your community was there something particular that you always took to harvest festival did somebody you knew have an allotment and did you always get a cabbage to take or um i don't know some radishes or some carrots or something like that okay mm. talking about that that back end of the year time couldn't miss out bonfire night could we and um that penny for the guy now did you ever did you ever make a guy to try and raise a bit of pocket money okay there's some children there and they're asking for three pence for the guy and it says it's due to a rise in the cost of living there you go and he's getting pushed round in an old um buggy there and then we've got one here sat in a chair on the street corner look so do you remember making a guy with your friends okay <clears throat> right now there are some things that just are peculiar to certain areas of the country now we've got a few here but you might remember some that were local to where you lived okay so uh, down south in Gloucestershire we've got uh, somewhere called Cooper's Hill we've got cheese rolling and there lots of people 
chase a nine pound double Gloucester cheese down a hill. It's quite a steep hill. And I think every year people get injured and the, every year they say, we're not going to do it anymore. It's too dangerous. And then every year they seem to do it again. Um, or <clears throat> something that happens in Yorkshire in a place called Gowthorpe, the World Coal Carrying Championships. Okay, so they carry, they race with sacks of coal on their backs. Okay. In Whitby, once a year, they plant what they call the Penny Hedge in the harbour. Um, and it dates back to supposedly the killing of a hermit and these people three men killed this hermit because he sheltered a wild boar that they were hunting and as their penance they had to build make a hedge using a penny knife and then they plant that in the harbour and it has to still be all together after three tides quite what happens if it wasn't still together i don't know but um but yeah so that's a local one and then if you perhaps grew up uh, around Bridlington or in Flamborough, this might be, um, if you might recognise this, this might be one that you know. It's the Sword Dancers. Now we've got some music that always makes me think of sword dancing when I hear this. So if you want to have a listen. sword dancers where you lived you might have had morris dancers um with all their jingly bells so we talked a lot about we talked about a lot of things today but that last section um sort of bonfire night and all those local customs um we're actually coming to an end for today um so we leave you to discuss those last things that we've just talked about uh, if any of you have got any memories that you want to tell us about or if you know of some really good local customs from where you live um, you can message us on our facebook page and that's east riding libraries museums and archives okay so if you want to um really retell your memory to a member of staff they can maybe message them through to us and we'd love to hear about them okay so we'll just say Goodbye for now and take care of yourself and we'll see you all again soon.